Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week. There's new knives on the table in front of me. They're the coolest that have just hit our shelves. So let's check them out. All right, first up this week is the Demco Free Rain, now with a new straight clip point style blade shape added to the lined up. Lined up? Lined up? Has lines. Don't wind me up. This is uh, the US made, or sorry, the, the blade at least uh, is made and ground here in the US. The other parts uh, to keep par uh, prices down, that being the injection molded handle and the sheath that we're gonna take a look at uh, are uh, imported from Taiwan, the same factory that makes uh, the standard versions of this knife with AUS-10 blade steel, but the MagnaCut is made and ground here in the US and everything's put together here in the US on these versions right here. The MagnaCut blade, five inches long, it's a very tough steel, it's a very stain resistant steel and it holds an edge very, very capably indeed. It's kind of like, I hate to say it, but like it's kind of the best all round steel on the market right now. And it's very cool to see on a knife like this with a five inch blade that is big enough to be your survival knife, yet not so big that it becomes unwieldy for just any kind of outdoor camping, hunting, anything you're gonna go tromping off the beaten path to do, this could be a very good companion. The blade is thick enough that it can stand up to a lot of abuse, but the grind is flat and high enough that it's going to slice pretty capably all the time as well. Three colors uh, are available right now. We've got this green, there's a gray, and there's also a blue, which should be the, uh, the most highly visible of these three uh, in the outdoors, if that is what you are after. You've got a full length tang underneath the uh, handle there. It protrudes at the back. It's not crisp enough in this case where you could like strike a fire steel or something with it. Uh, you would have to kind of go in and mod that, flatten it out if you wanted. Same thing with the spine, not really quite crisp enough to do that either, if that's your thing. Feels good in the hand. The clip point adds a, uh, a new dimension to the blade as opposed to the, uh, the drop point that we've seen before. A little bit pokier, a little bit slightly more tactical maybe, um, but it's still super solid. And then the sheath. The blade itself, knife itself is always cool, but the sheath is honestly my favorite part about this free rain design. It's multiple pieces. Instead of uh, glass filled nylon or uh, you know fiber reinforced nylon here in the center, which has the potential to you know dull your blade because the fibers can actually be harder than the steel. That center section is contains no fiber reinforcement, so it's much gentler on the edge. And then you've got the stronger reinforced sections around the perimeter to give it structure. It also allows you to take it apart and clean it very easily. Very cool to see uh, that continuing. It's a big thing I am a fan of with uh, the Demco fixed blade. So check these out while we got them. Uh, next up, um, we had more of these uh, this morning when we uh, were setting up to film right now, but this is actually a good opportunity to mention this knife, the uh, AD20, uh, US made version of this with 20 CV steel, nice slimmer uh, blade stock here that should be a lot slicier. The only problem with these new Knives of the Week videos uh, that we have is they only go up once a week. Uh, if you're looking for like all the uh, like up to the minute, you know, drop information when stuff like this hits the site, you're gonna wanna check out our uh, Instagram or Facebook pages. So there are links to those in the, um, in the uh, description below. Um, so I won't spend any more time talking about this, unfortunately. We, we literally found out as we're getting ready to film here uh, that these had sold out. I thought we had more, so I apologize. Probably but knife. go check them out there. All right, next up, uh, let's keep kind of the, uh, we'll, we'll lean into the tactical vibes here a little bit. Uh, the Tor Knives Darter T, uh, Tonto bladed knife, 350 bucks, made in the USA. We've got a three and a quarter inch, or sorry, four and a quarter inch S35 VN blade. It has a Tonto profile. You've got this aggressive uh, kind of sawtooth saw -teeth serration thing going on there at the back for kind of uh, ripping cuts. Um, cuts might be the wrong word, but like ripping motions and sawing motions there with the spine. The nature of this whole knife is basically thick and overbuilt in kind of a typical tactical style, yet it is you know, narrow enough and nimble enough that it can still move pretty quickly and with some agility to it without feeling like it's frail. I mean, check it out. There's plenty of beef behind that blade uh, to use the expression that no one else actually uses, but there you go. 
The handles are gray G10. We've got red G10 liners for a pop of color. Looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Uh, in terms of hand size, if you have slightly larger than average hands such as myself or smaller, you should have no real problem with this. Uh, however, if you have you know my kind of hand size and you wanna be wearing combat gloves with this, it might start to be getting a little tight um, for you. So keep that in mind. Uh, speaking of gloves, I either wear, wear either a large or an extra large depending on what the particular brand happens to be. So again, keep that in mind. We do have a protruding pommel here at the back of the, uh, the full tang design with some kind of jimping. That's the word. I was about to say serrations, but that's also the wrong word there. But it's a good control surface. The thumb indexes quite naturally there in an inverted grip, and it gives you some good traction there for really getting a handle on that knife. Handle. <laughs> Not funny, David. Not funny. That's fine. Sheath-wise, we have one made out of Kydex. It has a faux leather texture on the outside. And on the inside, to help kind of mitigate scuffing on the blade, which Kydex naturally does, there's actually some uh, some felt inserts on each side of the, uh, the sheath. Kind of an interesting and nice touch. We've also got uh, an Ulti clip is included uh, in the box, so you can either throw that in your pocket or more likely inside the waistband, or if you'd rather uh, have a typical belt carry, your uh, standard Blade Tech Tech Lock will fit the whole pattern on here, no problem. Uh, next up, we have the Benchmade Infidel. Uh, this is a new version here to us, and it is uh, limited in quantity. Uh, it looks maybe very similar to uh, current versions of the Infidel, but it is blacked out even more. We've got uh, black uh, slide. slide, thank you, Thomas, uh, compared to the gray on the D2 versions. And I say D2 versions because this is an S30V version of the Infidel, and it's also at a closeout price as well. This is coming in about $3.96, which is, gosh, it's like 100 bucks cheaper, uh, 100 bucks less expensive than the uh, the standard D2 version. So in my opinion, you're gonna get better edge retention and uh, a more premium steel for less money. So that's always nice. About a four inch blade, symmetrical handle, symmetrical blade, it is double edged. It is perfectly utilized with either hand due to its symmetrical nature. Deep carry pocket clip, nice slide action. Always works, always nice, feels good in the hand. I mean, it's a tactical icon. No doubt, has been for many years, continues to be, and you can get a pretty uh, decent price on one right now too. Uh, next, we've got the uh, the return of two, a fixed and a folder uh, of very purpose-driven tactical designs. These were previously marketed on the, under the Colonel Blades label. These are now uh, referred to as Regiment Blades. There you go, you got the fixed and the folders. This is the Lovis Pro. Uh, it is a two and three quarter inch blade, HCR series steel, double edged style, but only single edged. We've got no, uh, no sharpened spine here. Injection molded handles, full tang, very oversized finger guard here. Kind of, I see this as a bit of a competitor to something like K-Bar's TDI, but of course at a little bit higher price point, of course. Feels very solid. I don't have a uh, TDI here to compare it to, to what, say whether it's more or less, but it, it feels pretty good. And plenty of finger hole size there if you are wearing those heavier gloves as well. But very easy to use something like this because you simply you know, extend forward, the blade's already pointing in the direction you kind of want it to go, so to speak. Same materials, we have got the uh, fixed, or sorry, that was the fixed blade. We have the folder here, uh, three inch blade, all blacked out again, as you can see kind of the same shape, very, very similar. You can see there's slight differences. There's a little bit more handle, I think. Yeah, just a little bit to hold on to with the folding version here and still maintains that oversized hole right there. This is a button locking knife, but it comes with a secondary safety here at the back, engages automatically, kind of similar to a CRKT's auto locks system. It engages as soon as you open the blade. Speaking of which, your opening action here is with this flipper loop here at the back. Open it like a typical flipper knife and away you go. Spear point profile, again, no sharpened top edge, but you do have some extra serrations on the folding version right here. Again, feels super solid in the hand. Uh, price on both of these comes in at about 95 bucks right now. For about the same price, actually, you can also get something like this. Uh, we have 
a big new batch of Maverick Customs Titanium Pry Bars, each one a little bit different, might be different sizes, different finishes, some with or without features like the bottle opener right here. I happen to really enjoy flamed titanium as a finish in general, and I like the uh, spiralized flamed finish on this particular one. This comes in 3.8 inches, but there are longer versions available. Uh, you got the deep ride pocket clip there, which is quite nice, bottle opener as mentioned. Now, obviously there are uses for a uh, pry bar in you know, EDC for many folks as is, but this is also uh, one that I think makes a decent option. If you happen to be going somewhere, maybe you can't have a knife for one reason or another. Maybe you're traveling uh, or, you know, going to different locales. This could be a decent option because it fills that like knife shaped spot in your pocket where you feel like there should always be something. And yet it provides an acute enough edge that, you know, you could open some boxes with this uh, in a pinch if you needed to. And it also gives you something to uh, kind of poke with in an emergency situation, if you know what I mean. But anyway, big new selection of Maverick Customs tie prize. Check them out at the link below. Uh, let's talk about a flashlight real quick. Um, we've got uh, big new batches of Olight stuff uh, recently landed, including uh, this new model that I haven't uh, experienced before, the Warrior Nano. It's kind of a, I see it kind of a cross between, you know, the larger Nano, the full fisted sized version, and uh, the Baton series. It's a little bit in between, can ha be had in a few different colors, including this uh, very excellent red. I'm always a fan of their red. Uh, comes in 75 bucks and it has dual switches here. You've got the side switch as well as a rear tactical actuated style switch there at the back, as you can see. That switch is a forward clicky. If you're uh, into that sort of thing, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and it is also, uh, it also maintains the Olight magnetic charging capability. Charger is included, of course, uh, and that'll pop right on the back right there. Doesn't quite fill the fist probably for most folks the way the uh, larger Warriors can, uh, but it certainly fills it a little more than the Baton series. You can get a little bit of uh, the crown protruding there on the side if you uh, grip it just so. And of course, you've got those impact crenellations there at the front to aid you in that respect as well. And yet it's still light enough and equipped with the two-way pocket clip. You could pop that on the uh, brim of your hat and use it as a headlamp in a pinch too. So that's pretty cool. Uh, maximum output here, 12,000, sorry, 1,200 lumens. That truly would be an accomplishment uh, if that were a 12,000 lumen bad boy. Uh, as well as all the way down, there's gotta be a moonlight mode on this too, right? Um, yes, where is, it? where is it? There is also a half lumen mode. Six different levels, uh, not including strobe as also an option. So a few different colors as well, check them out. Uh, next up, for about the same amount of money, you've got the Metal 2 Flipper from O-Knife. Uh, I believe this is made for them uh, by Kaiser based on uh, the 154CM blade, two and three quarter inches, or sorry, two and seven eighths of an inch long. Uh, and the fact that they use Kaiser as their partner uh, in manufacturing for most of their knives uh, as well. Aluminum handles, very uh, festive. We'll call that a uh, dripping candy cane finish. It depends on your... <laughs> uh, it's a zombie green splattered handle. We'll leave it at that. Halloween and Christmas all in one. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, button lock actuation for that sub three inch blade. Nice flipping, nice wrist flicking when you want to do that. Nice little shape on the blade too. Nice and compact, going to be easy to carry. Uh, very useful shape for a broad variety of things. Black coating, high flat grind. Little bit of a, yeah, it's, it, it offers a decent enough grip. Uh, sometimes when knives are this small, the grip might feel a little shrimpy. And even though this is kind of a three and a half finger grip for me, I can choke up a little bit and there's enough thickness thanks to the aluminum there that I can get a solid Gorilla grip on that actually, perhaps surprisingly. The other thing I like here is the uh, aluminum here is not too slick. Sometimes that can be a worry, uh, but I don't find that to be the case here. Deep carry pocket clip, yeah, a little sticks up, not completely deep carry, uh, but it is reversible. So lefties should be able to use this knife no problem as well. Next up, we have the Sage 5 Lightweight from Spyderco with a Maximet steel blade. So if you want edge retention, this is amongst the best things you can get these days. Fantastic, fantastic edge retention out of the Maximet here. Not a stainless, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, there is a, a trade-off for that ultra high performance that you get with a blade steel like this. Uh, and there's a price tag too. This is about $230 here. 
three inch blade tip to scale full flat grind drop point shape that is going to be a nice everyday slicer but it's not so thin that it, you feel like there's a lack of strength in it and even though the handles are quote unquote lightweight they're injection molded there's a, a decent amount of, of perceived strength here too you've got full length liners and you've got the compression lock as well very strong mechanism it's also finger safe and fidget friendly which is always just a nice added bonus right hand biased in this case however but you do have a reversible wire uh, pocket clip you can get a full length grip on this knife thanks to the included uh jimping there around the pivot area in their signature quote unquote finger choil plenty of length there to grab onto and push this blade into some bigger cuts and just go to work with it that's what it's going to be best at but it's not going to weigh down the pockets we're coming in just at three ounces here so not a featherweight but certainly nothing that is going to impede uh you're moving about uh, in your day-to-day -day life very very nice so speaking of more power powerful cuts uh the best tech slasher new versions of this uh larger than the originals which were uh, just over three inches these are now at uh, three and a half inches they could have called it like the slasher large or like the slasher two or something um slightly confusing uh, but it's just slasher it's just a larger version of it you have micarta handles on uh these bad boys uh green uh kind of a uh, denim -y looking blue as well as a black uh the black one is only available with the black blade the others can also be had with black or a satin finished blade plenty of handle length and girth there for most uses d2 steel three and a half inches as mentioned modified sheep's foot profile with a high flat grind and a swedge it has got hard worker written all over it it's going to slice well enough the profile to the belly there is not so aggressive that it's going to slip out of cuts super easily you should have an easier time than most drop points keeping it in a longer push cut especially which is quite nice moving back to the handle we have a deep carry wire pocket clip nice embedded there into the handle scales with a strong screw it is reversible which is also nice especially considering we've got a crossbar lock for the locking mechanism there which is also fully ambidextrous as well as fun to use as well as keeping your fingers away from the edge as you close it lot of good things going on there ball bearings in this pivot it's got that signature kind of free floating crossbar lock feel when it's uh, in motion and when it's not in motion it just feels super solid price on these 65 dollars at this point in time uh how about another crossbar locking knife another very popular crossbar locking knife this is the Kaiser drop bear an upgraded version uh standard ones uh are about 120 bucks with an aluminum handle and 154 cm blade uh this one's coming in at 169 upgraded to powder metallurgy with s35 vn blade steel and fat carbon handles and an upgraded pocket clip here too with a very nice rolled over section here where your fingers are going to be passing over it just a nice touch and uh still maintains deep carry capability and reversibility which is quite nice this is a knife that despite it's just three inch blade is another th one of those knives that feels like it can punch a little above its weight class so to speak that's partly due to the handle here it's got enough girth and enough length for just a real confident grip and the blade itself has that kind of stubby tipped nature so you don't feel like you're getting too delicate out there near the tip but it's still going to be decently precise and it's still going to slice well with its higher flat grind there lots of extra jimping all the way down the spine until the drop starts to happen so you've got a more uh more aggressive feeling of control over the blade as well when you are choking up and doing different things which is quite nice oh yeah and it crossbar locks quite nicely the action's great you've got the uh, ball bearings in the pivot of this knife as well overall just a really nice package all right how about some Italian knives from Viper this is a, a new version of the Katla uh, this one is coming in at about 166 for the uh, Zircote wood versions uh, but we've got a ton of different new versions some different exotic woods uh, some different materials uh, as well uh, let's see what do we got I should have looked this up before <laughs> um, sorry 
Uh, yeah, just several woods, a, uh, a carbon fiber and damasteel version as well. Um, actually, yeah, it's a bunch of, bunch of new exotic woods. Oh man, pictures here look really good. <laughs> but this one looks really good too. The blade itself is M390, comes in about three and a quarter inches long, distinctive straight clip point shape with a bit of technically Tonto-ish going on. I guess it's not a clip point. I'd say that is a Tonto, in fact. But it's not Thomas, a reverse Tonto. I'll turn it upside down. Now it's just a reverse Warncliffe. Reverse modified Warncliffe. Where's your Christmas spirit, man? Not till, uh, not till Monday. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, it feels nice. The handles on these have always felt really exceptional too. Uh, the contoured versions of it especially. And in the wood, that just takes that shape to the next level. It has just a classic, a warm, kind of an inviting feel when you hold it. It just kind of feels at home. It's quite nice. We have a, a single position pocket clip here on the back. It, is that tight? it might actually even be a titanium pocket clip. I'm not sure. Looks like it might be. Uh, inset into the handle with some flush head screws. Very nice. Copper colored backspacer there. Inset liner lock. Let's check out the action. You've got flipper tabs or thumb studs. Take your pick. I'm gonna go thumb studs first. That feels nice. Let's hit the flipper tab. Also feels nice. Very nice indeed. Ball bearings. Did I mention ball bearings? Probably. Probably. Feels good. It's so nice. Crown spine. All, all those kind of just premium, slightly exotic, slightly more upscale features you tend to get with Italian made knives. You get them here and that's a good thing because it's excellent. Even more than that, I'm really liking this handy fixed blade. And that is both a description of what it is as well as its name. This is the Viper Handy. Uh, this one, uh, well, what, is it, what do they start at price-wise? Because this one's one of the slightly more expensive versions. Uh, starting at 158 for uh, Micarta versions. This version features SureTouch for the handles, which is layers of rubber and G10 interspersed between each other. And as such, you get some of the benefits of a rubberized handle. You get that extra grip, you get a little bit of shock absorption, vibration absorption, I should say, not electrical shock in this case. But you also get something that's a bit more stable, a bit more durable even, thanks to the, uh, the G10 layers. Let's talk about more about that handle before we get to the blade, which is also very cool, but slightly unusual looking, I will admit, I will agree with you in fact. And yet when it's in the hand, it makes so much sense. I mean, look where my fingers fall along those, uh, those control surfaces of the blade. If your hands are my size, at least that is just a perfect, perfect fit. Extra grips. Yeah. This might get a little bit in the way if you're trying to do like a chest lever grip with this sort of thing, but, Detailed pinch grips, feels great. Reverse grips, not too bad. Inverted grips, feel very good too. And the sure touch is just icing on the cake for that. So we're talking about the blade now. Magna cut steel here as well. Super high performance stuff. Almost a full flat grind with a swedge. Drop point profile, 3.3 inches. That's probably tip to scale in this case. Sharpened edge is uh, gonna be a little bit less than that. Let me check that number there. Uh, cutting edge just over uh, three inches, almost three point uh, three and an eighth roundabouts. This is going to be an awesome everyday style fixed blade. I mean, just smaller utility stuff, small hunting knife, even I would say. Take it camping too. Heck, this is a, a very versatile little knife. Uh, the sheath here, it's made out of leather and it's got kind of a classic old school style of carry system going on which is to say it is set up to enable both cross draw carry, you know, there in the front, reach across, as well as leaving uh, two cuts in that leather loop for vertical carry as well, right? Yeah, vertical is the word, correct. So a couple of different options there, which are quite nice. I happen to be a big fan of cross draw on a small fixed blade, especially when I'm doing uh, my camping activities. It's a great place to have a small useful knife just like this. Next up. I don't even need to say anything, do I? How beautiful is this? I have long been a fan of Felic Neven's Northern Lights series. Uh, this is the NL5 Dune. Uh, it has a four inch blade. Uh, this is a newer kind of upgraded version of the originals. And we had this a little earlier in the year and they sold out super fast. 
now we have more finally. So I finally actually get to hold one. I never did before. Uh, this is the, like I said, the more premium one. This is about $440. Uh, it is made in Japan, I believe, even though, you know, Felgen even is a Swedish based company. Uh, most of their fixed blades are in fact made in Japan. Uh, four inch blade, laminated cobalt steel blade, full height convex grind with no secondary bevel comes right down to zero. That is just awesome. Classic styling with that stacked leather handle, including some extra little spacers for extra vibes. Feels great. It's not a perfectly round handle that is likely to twist on you. It is shaped quite nicely, flat enough with a swell in just the right place so that it's not going to rotate and is yet going to fill the hand and feel super comfortable at the same time. A little bit on the thicker side, but the full height convex kind of counteracts that a little bit in terms of its actual cutting performance. Butt cap with a lanyard hole at the bottom. I mean, it's just... I like it so much. I'm sorry I bumped I think the, the mic. Likes it too. Sorry I bumped the microphone there, Thomas. It's just this is a design that speaks to me. I lusted over one of these for many years in my younger, uh, you know, less affluent days. Not that I'm affluent now, but you know what I mean. Um, I can't afford it now either. He likes it. I like it a lot. We have a black leather sheath, nice and thick. I mean, just check out how thick the welts are on that. It's two extra layers of leather, lots of rigidity there, thick pieces of leather to start out with. You've got a retention snap, simple style uh, belt loop there at the bottom, riveted into place. Not too bulky, it's compact enough that it's not going to take up too much space width wise on your belt. And it's just one of those blades that is just the right size to be super awesome and super useful, super handy all the time. It's like a fancier version of the F4 in many ways. Or the F1, I should say, not the F4. Felt like the F4. Oh, be still my heart. One last for today from Mazarin. Uh, and this is an Elmax steel small fixed blade called the Mini Trapper for just 74 bucks. It's actually hard to get Elmax uh, any more affordably than this these days. Uh, you've got a two and three quarter inch, or sorry, 2.36 inch blade, but the cutting edge itself is only a little over one and a half inches here. Uh, that other measurement is from the tip to the leading edge of the stag handles, which you can see right there. The blade itself is a bit on the thicker side, I will say that. It's not gonna be the easiest, you know, sliciest handy little knife for uh, everyday things. You're gonna have to get around uh, the thickness of the blade stock right there. The counterpoint to that is, it is gonna be very, very sturdy. Uh, and it is very comfortable too, thanks to the uh, crowning going on all around and gives you a very comfortable feel on those sections that do not have handle scale attached. Feels good. Stonewashed finish is always nice. I am a big fan of that in general. And the sheath here, this is basically, as far as I see it, it's designed to replace like a classic slip joint pocket knife in your pocket. It's got a leather, slip basically with a snap there uh, to cover the blade. I would almost wouldn't even call it a sheath. There's no pocket clip. There's no belt attachment or anything like that. There's not even any way to carry it uh, as a neck knife as it is out of the box. It's just something that you're gonna go live in your pocket and be super handy when you need to make a small but confident cut. So there you go. You can check that out as well. But that's all we have for today. Thanks everyone for sticking around. Thanks for another great year. 2023 is rapidly coming to a close. I'm sure we'll have some uh, cool end of the year coverage next week as well. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description. It'll take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our long running knife rewards program, because whether you're buying something for yourself or someone else this time of year, you can earn some free money to spend on a future knife. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.